Mom and yours. Yes, we've had individual state champions, yeah, but we've never won the state meet. We've been three, we've been third twice. 56, 57. We're leaving to the fastest high school state meet in uh, Texas, the 5A UIL Interscholastic Swimming Championships. 04 high, five. Diving is uh, scored with swimming. If you're in a sport with diving and swimming, basically we started the regional meet out without a diving team, 68 points behind everybody. 212, 13. It was really challenging though. You just jump into swimming and then you, you have to race against all these swimmers who've been at this sport since they were three and they're, they're just zooming across the pool and you're just hoping that you won't get overlapped in the beginning. There's a lot of pressure. You always hear about the reputation, the records, the number of swimmers that have gone on to college under Steve because he's an amazing coach. I feel good. <laughs> and the whole time you feel pressured every meet, but that pressure just makes you better. Make sure your name's remembered as part of the Eastwood legacy. Want me to win state because I have a good, really good chance at getting a first place medal. It's been a long time since someone's won state. I'm going to keep swimming in college and hopefully get an Olympic trial cut. Hey, good job, Brian. 56, 57. If you're in a sport with diving and swimming and combined scores, we would definitely have a lot better chance than we are right now. Place it's called Arena Mexico, right here in Murdo and Cotton. It's close to the Segundo Barrio to other places. I am the third generation from my grandfather who wrestled as Dr. X to my uncle and father who were known as the Cobardes. It is something that is in my blood. I think it gets people out of their house on Sundays, so something good. The rules, I mean, they're just, they're, they're it. I mean, they come and excite the people. They get everybody going, and once they're up there, I mean, what they do, the way they wrestle, the way they, they jump from the ropes. I will give you an interesting fact. Do you know where Mexican Lucha Libre was born? It really started here in El Paso, Texas. Mr. Salvador Lutheroff, may he rest in peace, he was the father of Lucha Libre in Mexico. When he took Lucha Libre to Mexico, he was here where he first encountered Lucha Libre. He then said, let's see what happens, and from there it was a boom. <laughs> We have classes here for those children stick, keep them off the street, keep them off drugs, so they come and train here with us. Tiempo. The first type of wrestling they teach you is uh, high school wrestling, which is on the mat for wrestling, and then they go on to Greek wrestling, which is also part of the fundamentals of wrestling. And as you progress, you go on and you turn into VA professional wrestling. Well, my dad took me to the Coliseum to, to see wrestlers. Um, I like how they do the, the flips. And the head scissors. My name will be the Grave Digger. When we found out that they were having wrestling classes, we brought him. I mean, he was in, in karate and t-ball and all these other sports, and he left everything just to come to wrestling practice. We had to bring our report card here. I think he, he's more disciplined than he was before. Right here, you can leave the stress out of the way. You can enjoy a, a good show that it's going to make you happy and it's going to make you forget about your problems. The children are our future of tomorrow. I want to form good wrestlers. Good wrestlers who are well prepared, who will be just as good or better than me within the professional free wrestling. go to Anthony High School. As a requirement at Anthony, we have to all take a senior project. Please, good luck. We're going to start this event right now, players. I picked a foosball tournament. And I kind of wanted to do something different, out of the ordinary, kind of bring something great to El Paso. When, when you start running tournaments like this, you'll get players coming in from all different states. You know, they're going to they're gonna fly in, they're going to travel in, they're going to buy hotel rooms, they're going to spend money. Anybody can play. It doesn't matter how tall you are, 
how small you are, how big. For her to take on a project this big was very, very amazing for a young lady that has never ran a tournament before. I never realized how hard it would be to get sponsors and stuff because my goal was to guarantee the money at this tournament. Uh, you know, when I was real young, I started playing and uh, I just started getting better and I started winning and there was money involved and, you know, and I could go visit all these places and play foosball and actually make, you know, a living off it. It is a lot mental. Once you get all the skills and you're able to do whatever you want, then it all comes down to knowing what to do, when to do it, you know, what the other players think you're going to do, and then you got to do the opposite, you know. And I just never realized how much actually goes into putting in an actual tournament. I've had to advertise, I've had to do so many different things I would have never even thought of, so it's, it's definitely been a lot of work. Uh, she's really worked hard, and I'm hoping she'll get a big A-plus on this one, because she definitely deserves it. In the 1800s, there was a, a little town by the name of uh, Los Amoles. In the 1800s, like 1882, there was a, a big flood that uh, almost raised the town. So the people moved here to the present town of La Union. Not good. Not good, ladies and gentlemen. Not good at all. Well, that day was uh, Thursday, two weeks ago, and uh, I was home and I, I turned around, I was expecting water from the roof, and all over the sun, I see in the, in the ground, the water start coming through the bottom of the house. I think that what the county has done with the roads has been okay, you know, but there's still a lot of things that need to be put back in place. As citizens, we really have to be on top of the officials that govern our little communities like the earthen dams, that they really be maintained. To make another wall, um, it will be probably like 3,000, 4,000, just to make a second wall, to, because this one is going to go down eventually. We feel like we're close enough to El Paso and far away from El Paso. If you drive on Highway 28, you'll see tractors all the time, and you'll see cotton fields and, and corn fields, and, and chili fields, and you see our maize. It's a beautiful little green valley in the middle of the desert. It's a beautiful place. God bless America, the land that we love. Stand we thought it would be a really great experience for them to see this part of it because they need to understand that the, rela the reality is that sometimes they, they do die in battle for us. The dog tag, um, it's, it's in loving memory of Juan Dominguez, my great grandpa. World War II. It's the fact that when veterans or when, when, when soldiers and sailors, Marines, uh, sign on the line, they're willing to put it all on the line, including their lives. And, and hardly anybody knows what that is, unless you have served. It's Veterans Day, and we wanted to, to give a memory pot. Forty years ago, Jose Hernandez passed away on the base that I was in in Vietnam. I've been looking for that family in, like I say, for 15 years to, to tell them that their son or husband or brother or uncle uh, was important to me and it was so touching to hear them singing their songs that, that at least at this age they remember the sacrifices that veterans have made.